Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago, and we continue our conversation back into politics now and uh, really in relation to what's taking place. And uh, the Prime Minister responded to the front page of the Guardian newspaper today, and we did mention the front page of the Guardian newspaper, Abu Bakr, PM invited me. This is what the Prime Minister had to say this morning. A short while ago, a couple hours ago, he released this statement on his Facebook page uh, where he basically said that that did not happen. I'm going to get it on my phone. Give me a couple seconds. And uh, looking at what's taking place, this is uh, what the Prime Minister had to say um, on his Facebook page this morning. We get so many messages. Hold on a second here. Yeah. Uh, the fanciful musings of, uh, that's the front page of the Guardian newspaper, Abu Bakr PM invited me. Now, in a response to what was stated in the Guardian newspaper, this is what the Prime Minister had to say. The fanciful musings of Mr. Fuad Abu Bakr have now found prime space on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Just for the benefit of the readers, permit me to state that I can't remember the last time I spoke with the gentleman and most certainly have never invited him into the PNM, far less through a back door, which is zealously guarded, heavily guarded, that is, by articles of the party's constitution. It is good to see him showing an interest in joining the PNM and wanting to do national service, but in going, on, going about it in this bizarre way, he has caused me to instruct the party's general secretary, secretary to thank him for his interest shown in, and also he sent a copy of the PNM's uh, se uh, le selection forms, membership forms, screening processes, and also the constitution. But joining us on the morning bureau at this time, Mr. Fuad Abu Bakr. Well, good morning, how are you? Good morning. Uh, I can't help but smile and laugh when I, I hear the words of, well, the Prime Minister or somebody who wrote that for the Prime Minister. And I was explaining on my life that people, a Prime Minister has so many responsibilities that he can't fulfill everything himself. So most likely, that is not his actually actual words. For sure, the person who typed it into Facebook um, is not actually him, you know. So it's very amusing. Um, I thank him for the he sending some, um, some some documents from his party in terms of registration and membership. Um, thank you very much. I know that the processes that he's speaking about now uh, are not always followed. So, you know, that, so, that, that, that's fine, very, very funny. I don't even take it as a, a, a condescending um, response because I don't think he would be condescending to the youth of Trinidad and Tobago. We have you? real issues and we are standing up and we are speaking out and we want to be heard. And we don't just want to be heard, we want to be part of the process, we want to lead our own futures. Tell me a little bit about the backstory of this. You said that you find it a little comical, that you would laugh at the comments. Is it that you were invited to be on and promised the seat? Were you, set, were you told you are going to get the Port of Spain seat and you will fight under the Balize banner? For, Port of Spain South. So, hey, Ma, you know me for some time. Do you know me to be a person that is delusional or insane? So where did you get it? Who told you that you were going to get it? And did they say that I had the blessings of the party committee and the blessings of the prime minister? So there have been representations and communications between myself and my father with the prime minister for, for, for a lengthy period of time, um, about three months, three or four months. My father last met with the prime minister on well, I, I ensure that I took notes to see the exact time, the exact place on last week Tuesday at his constituency office in, Dago, in well, Dago Martin West, but Carinage to be specific. Around 12 o'clock, he went to speak to the Prime Minister at his request to talk about upcoming elections and how we, because I represent the new national vision, which has the support of a lot of people, but part of that support is from the Jamata Muslimin, the many men and women um, who 
who live in this western area and spread across Trinidad and Tobago. When you it say the support, so you are saying, and I'm, I'm going on it, you're claiming that uh, the Jamaat al muslimin was invited and asked to support the People's National Movement? So the new national vision is the political organization that has the majority of support from the Jamaat al muslimin and from a lot of people in the wider public of Trinidad and Tobago. Many people know me as an active person in the political arena. I've contested two general elections thus far. And we, my father being the representative, the actual person who went to speak with Mr. Keith Rowley in person, we were invited to get involved in this political process to assist the PNM and also get involved with them in delivery and in representing the people of Trinidad and Tobago. When you talk about delivery and support, what, how would, what form would this take? So, from the representations that my father articulated to me from that direct meeting, they were very interested in getting support along the East-West Corridor um, as much as possible because this election is going to be a very close election. It is going to be a very hotly contested election. And if, if you are aware of the political climate in Trinidad and Tobago, for the last five years, there has not been the type of delivery and representation that the people of Trinidad and Tobago would want. Now, Paul, I want, to, I want to separate you from your father because I know that you are forging your own path. And, you know, yes. it's, it's always very difficult when you have um, you have a figurehead of such magnitude uh, that exists in your family structure. But the organization that your father's aligned to, and I do have to ask this question, has been identified as political, as being used as muscle in elections passed by not just the PNM, but also by the UNC as well. Was this support going to take this form? Was that the request made of you and your father? So, so that again, Hema, is extremely laughable. Everyone on the grassroots of Trinidad and Tobago along the, the East-West Corridor knows that the Imam and whatever support he had at that point in time helped the Basio Pandey administration go into office. So the Imam and Mr. Basio Pandey were excellent friends and still are. Likewise, everyone in Trinidad and Tobago who is aware of the political history knows that my father supported and assisted Mr. Patrick Manning in going into office on numerous occasions, not just one occasion. So, you know, this talk about muscle or whatever, it is not about muscle. It is about connection with the people of Trinidad and Tobago. It is about an organization that has a reputation of assisting, of feeding people, of you go, go to Nipdek, back, Nipdek car park, where there's this homeless center, and ask the people, who is Fuad Abu Bakr? And who is Brother Bilal? And, and who is Yasin Abu Bakr? But so it is that connection that these politicians want to use to attain office over and over again. Now, it is uh, also, and I, I can say that, because I do know that the organization, like many others, would do a lot of charity work and would do a lot of a lot of good because there are a lot of vulnerable people that lie within the mix of our social structures. But also yes. the organization, who are you after, we can't ignore the fact, was linked to an attempted coup. The organization has many of your members, and I can't say whether or not the hierarchy, but many of the members have been linked at one time to kidnapping. Uh, they were identified as members of the Jamaat al muslimin who attending the mosque in Mukarapu. I would like to eagerly question you, um, Emma, but, you know, questionable activities have been linked to, to persons um, who align themselves or who claim to be. Right. So, so you know, your, your, my, your, my question your, would be about right. the, the nature of this support and, you know, and, and feeding into that narrative because we've had, we've had political commentators, you've had historians, um, you have stories all over the Caribbean where, and you, you say it, that several political leaders have approached because of the connection that you have to the ground. And we do know, we see what's happening in the U.S. There clearly is a dis disconnect between leaders and what's happening on the ground and the angst that people feel. So we, we can say that. So yeah, yeah. there well, are organizations that fill that void. So how would you respond to that? 
Yes, so let me help you. So the Jamaat al Muslimin, as an organization, we have members, people who come, worship, etc., people who get involved even stronger in the organization. We have never encouraged people in criminal activity. There is the incident of July 27, 1990, and that is the history of Trinidad, and people should research that history and try to understand what took place. But very recently, I had reason to sue the Guardian newspaper because a publication came out stating that a Jamaat al Muslim member did some crime or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not proper reporting. That has biased and prejudiced people against the Jamaat al Muslim for a very long period of time. And we are going to be successful because it is a clear case of defamation. You never see another member of a church, even though this individual is actually not a member at all. Mm -hmm. He doesn't function by us. He doesn't even come to the mosque. But even if he did, you never see member of a Presbyterian church, Lord of whatever, caught with drugs. Y you know, it is just defamatory. Same. And it has been practiced over and over in the media to the extent to which people associate certain negative things. You know what we get here, Mom, at our Jamaat? Because I, I work as a youth officer. Mm -hmm. We get young men who think the organization has certain um, strength, sometimes negative um, leanings, and they can get protection, belonging, help. And when they come and I explain to them what Islam is, peace, love, caring, sharing, etc. When they understand what we are really about, some of them change their lives and some of them leave. We have this immense job to deal with the social decay in these urban communities from Diego Martin, where the prime minister has his constituency, straight up to Port of Spain, Laventil, et cetera, because we are situated in this region. So you're saying that all that it is as a result of media negativity and that the people who have identified themselves, and I'm, because I do, I do know the good work that you do, and I would say that publicly. But Thank you very much. I also, you I know, and I ask the question. I think the <laughs> Mohammed Muakils, who are Freetown Collective, the Naima Muakils, who are the cre curators of the National Museum, the um, Kala Akibor, son Atiba Akibor, who is a doctor in the Port of Spain General Hospital, the Sabira Abubakar, who is a doctor now working and living in Jamaica, the Rodanfa Abubakar, who is a national footballer, the Fuad Abubakar, who is a political activist and, and, and businessman. But then academic. I come back to the perceptions, and as you said, you have also said that sometimes people come to the. Go on and on, eh, Hima, but you cut me. I know, I know you can go on and on. Um, but you know, it comes back again. You know, we talk about not just the 1990, but the talk. But the fact is that um, there have been the force of the Jamaat al muslimin has been used. And if you had now, considering where we are, and I know we're out of t are running out of time. What will yeah, sure. the what will what will you and your father do in the election when it's called? Who will you support? Will you still so support the PNM? Be clear. I am the political leader of the new national vision. My father was the former chairman. I actually removed him from that position so that we can progress and move forward as a party with more young, vibrant, articulate individuals. We are going to contest the seats in Trinidad and Tobago that we see as strategic as a new national vision. I thought that the prime minister wanted to change the current structure of the PNM and make it more grassroots I thought that he would have brought my good self in and Mr. David Mohammed, and we would have been able as MPs and maybe ministers to deliver to the people who they have not delivered for, for years upon years. And that would have augured well for Trinidad and Tobago, and it would have been a benefit to the PNM. They were only interested apparently with us campaigning along the East-West Corridor, helping them to win. But and did they actually say that to you, those exact words, we want the Jamaat al muslimin to campaign for us? Of course, what else do they want? What else did Bazio Pandey want? What else did Mr. Patrick Manning want? But and you're saying the current administration wants, wanted the same thing? Yes, yes, he wanted Mr. Keith Rowley, and, and they still do. And I'm sure even the UNC, if they could have us work and help them to get into power, 
they would they would welcome us through a back door, through a front door, whatever door. Because you see, Emma, the political structure is wrong. The desire for power is more important to them than people. So what do you want to say to the population that's looking at you this morning? You say that you are going to contest this election. Um, yes. You know, and I, I you know, you, you, you are defending the organization of which you say that there is a, a bias in the media. One, one of the organizations that support the new, right. new national vision. And the new national vision is wider than just the Jamaat. What do you want to say to the population that would look to you this morning and they feed into that perception? Uh, because, you know, we can say that there have been members in the past that have been faced, the faced in the courts and they have been reported to be members of the Jamaat al-Muslimin. There have been members, as with other organizations. Well, of course, with other organizations, even within your organization. Um, so what do you want to say to the population the, on this? There are members of the media who have committed crimes. That is that, true. Yeah, I mean, that is... that. If unless the actual modus operandi continually and the creed and the the representation of our of that organization is criminal activity, then that's not true. That's it's not it's not fair. And that is what has been done for so long. So what I want to say to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and him I'll, I'll be real with you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago know us, you know, like on the ground level. I know there is this middle class who may not interact with us. A few people, not many, who feed into some of the biases and the prejudices. But the actual people on the ground, uh, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our aunts, our uncles, our nieces, our friends, our neighbors, we live with those people. And they see how we live on a daily basis. So that is why they vest so much confidence in us. Yeah. All we're saying is that, and that is what I represented to the prime minister, that we cannot be used again to just bring votes to the PNL, sure. and then we don't have the ability to represent those people that we brought. Will you support the PNM? My final question to you. Will you support the PNM or the UNC? No, I do not support the ideals of race politics. I do not support the ideals of non-representation. I do not support the inequality and corruption that is taking place. I do not support this big financier control party, PNM and UNC, that is going to get back and do corrupt work if they get into office. I wish we had more time to talk a little bit about your party and, and the old policy, but we will definitely have that. But for what I do want to oh, thank you very much. It's going to change in 2020, Hima. Thank you so much. Uh, we definitely uh, appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning. We take a very short break. When we come back, it is rainy season. What does that mean? Khalid will be joining us for a couple of minutes. They ask the questions, those challenging questions that no other media house would ask. So, you know, shed light on those things that are in the dark, those stories that no one else wants to cover. Um, I grew up reading The Guardian, actually. It's a household name. About The Guardian, one thing that I like, the human interest stories have increased. See the investigative pieces on the human trafficking. I find that very interesting. Sam, you go more in depth. On sports, especially local sports, and that's one of my highlights for The Guardian. Yeah, I've been in Guardian since The Guardian started coming, started coming out, started working. I was a newspaper man. <laughs> Could these stories that are being covered uh, well detailed and we get more facts. At this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it, mm, like to know everything what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth and you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the communities. And I even saw my community featured and I was proud. But the Guardian. 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 The Guardian is my first choice.